God bless you all. Good to see you all in the house of the Lord God. They say that the church was closed, but I beg to differ. Uh, God Amen. is always moving. He has uh, a generation uh, that a root, root, a, a root that is uh, yielded to him. And we thank God today and we speak life into America. Even though we see death coming and coming fast, we speak life. We have power and authority in the earth through the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we thank him for today. We thank him, oh God, for our uh, bishop, Iona Locke. We thank God for her and the CCMA family. We thank God for our own overseer, Jeanette Williams White. We thank God for her. Come on and put your hands together. Uh, and also for the pastors, uh, the elders, the ministers, the people of God, and you out in uh, the social world of media, we pray and we honor you as the people of God. We thank God today and also to my beautiful wife, uh, Pastor Valerie White, we thank God for her and I personally thank God for her myself because it was a gift given to me. I thank God uh, for her because she balances me and we balance one another. And we learn, we're learning to become one. In marriage, you learn, you walk until you become one. Amen, because the two becomes one. The twain is joined together and oneness. Thank you, Lord. Uh, today, we come to you all and greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and if you will, if you would turn your Bibles, uh, we won't be long, uh, turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 13. And this is where we are in our Bible class. And I encourage you all, even out in um, Facebook world, please join us in Bible class on Thursdays at 7 o'clock. From 7 to 8 o'clock, we are walking through the word uh, piece by piece, scripture by scripture, line by line, uh, line upon line, precept upon precept, and precept being the major theme. So uh, please join us Thursday at 7 o'clock. Amen. Uh, turn to chapter um, uh, in Matthew, chapter number 13 where Jesus begins to teach in parables. The thing that I love about Jesus is he came preaching about the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven. Uh, he never gets off message pre preaching about the kingdom. We today must never get off the message of the kingdom. Jesus never preached anything other than his kingdom. Everything was geared to the kingdom. Now let's look at him because he teaches now, he breaks it down in parables. Uh, the, in 13, he talks about the parable of the sower. But skip down to 18 so we won't have to read a whole chapter where he explains the parable of the sower. In 18, it reads, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sower. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understands it not, then cometh the wicked one that catches away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received the seed by the wayside. Hold that wayside. Uh, 20 says, but he that received the seed unto stony places, the same is the, he that heareth the word and immediately receiveth with joy. Yet hath he not no root in him, but dureth for a while. For when tribulation and persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. In 22, he also uh, that received the seed among thorns, it is he that heareth the word 
and the, the, and the cares of this world, my God, and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becometh unfruitful, my God. 23 in conclusion, but he that receiveth the seed into good ground, is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which is bear fruit and bear and bring which bears fruit and bringeth forth some hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty, if we can say amen to the reading of his word. Uh, Jesus here now teaches about par he teaches in a parabolic form. Parables are Jesus is uh, a tool that Jesus uses as short stories that teach a moral or spiritual lesson by an analogy or similarity. Uh, the lesson uh, they were stories based on agricultural life that was immediate that was an immediately familiar to the original audience of the first century. He compares the kingdom of God to something from an everyday life that could be easily understood. And that's how you hear the kingdom of God is as of. My God, how can we compare anything to his kingdom? But he uses the things of this time to compare it so that we can gain an understanding. My God, how many times uh, uh, I want to focus on the three grounds that the seed uh, is falling on. Remember, the seed is the word of God. The sower is Christ working through uh, Methodists or the disciples to spread the gospel throughout the world. These parables was used as a warning to the laborers that are in the field, you and I, his disciples, that he is sending and initiating out into the field with the gospel of the kingdom. He comes with the message of the kingdom and never gets off the message. Everything that Jesus uh, preached about was concerning the kingdom of heaven, which is the gospel proclamation of Jesus as king and Messiah. Somebody say amen. And so when we're dealing with the four grounds that the seed or the word falls on, pay attention to the grounds. It's four grounds by which the seed or the word falls on. The first one is the wayside. The second one is storm, stony places. The third one is thorns and thistles. And the fourth one is good ground. Uh, I, I pray that it finds uh, its root on good ground. The first one, the wayside, is the one that does not understand truly the word or one that does not receive the word by faith. The understanding is when you receive it by faith, then you understand and it causes you to receive it and obey it. Don't let it fall on the wayside. Side. The second one is the stormy places. This is the shallow hearted individual, the one who immediately receives it with joy. This is the emotional Christian. This is the one that is driven by emotions, but when it is tested under tribulation or persecution, it withers away and it has no root. Uh, we cannot be emotional Christians. We cannot be led by our feelings. Oh, I feel like this and I feel like shouting. No, it has to come from the inside. Your spirit must be moved by God. That's why when we pray, we don't pray amiss. We pray with passion. We don't pray with emotions just because Help me, God, that one is praying and crying. 
does not mean that there's so much caught in the spirit of it. We have to know that we can't be caught in emotions. It's a welling that comes from the inside. It is a passion and a compassion that makes you pray from your gut. It is that which when you receive what God has given to you, it's not the one that goes clapping with joy. But when the word came and found me and it preached the truth to me, I begin to wail. I begin to cry and lament. Why? Because I was going the wrong way. I was convicted in my heart, not in my feelings, not the way I seen things in my emotion, but God had touched me on the inside. He's dealing now with the inner parts of man. That's how the word falls and now we're seeing them fall on stony places my god the third ground is the thorns these are the grounds that are the cares of this world it is the carnal and worldly believer one who never breaks from his past I am going to stay here right now for a second. You have got to break from your past. Uh, when you come into God, you must release every soul tie, everything that ties you to what led you against the rebellion of who God is. Uh, we have Christians today that have not savored uh, ties to this world, that are not savored ties to relationships, ties to things that would drive your heart from God. If it's a car, let it go. If it's a woman, let her go by. If it's a man, let him go and pull God with everything that you have. Savor yourself from the cares of this world. Don't you be led by politics. Don't you be concerned so much about these conspiracies. Don't you know that conspiracies is nothing new? That's why the people, even in Israel, have not accepted that Jesus has totally come in the flesh. Why? Because the uh, conspiracies uh, that the Pharisees and the sad Ucees, they didn't believe in the resurrection. They didn't believe that one could die uh, and raise in victory. Uh, and that's what made them sad than the Sadducees. That's a sad place to be uh, where you won't accept truth uh, and you just accept explain it away. No, no. We don't live in a conspiratorial world. We live in truth. And the truth is in the word of God. And it is not to fall on thorns, a ground that won't even grow it, a ground that won't receive it, a ground that won't release itself from its past. If there's anything in your life people out there on Facebook, if it's something in your life that causes you and keeps you from God, ask God to sever it away from you. Ask him to burn it out. Ask him, oh Lord, take it out of my way. If it's drugs, he'll deliver you from it. If it's drinking, he'll deliver you from it. If it's whoremonger and lying, procrastination, God, God, help me in severing out of my life so my heart is not a heart of thorns. This is where materialism and it chokes away in the life until the believer becomes unfruitful. Have you ever seen somebody in God start out with power? They come out running fast when you get saved. You can't stop your sprint you're rebuking every demon, casting out spirits, race worshiping and praising God. But 
the race is not for the swift. You've got to endure this race. You've got to pace yourself in this race. How do you pace yourself? It's through prayer. It's through fasting. It's through endurance. And the bottom line, you've got to have faith. The just shall live by faith. I got to take off these glasses because they're getting fogged up. The just, those that are justified by faith, it is by faith that I believe and receive the salvation of Jesus Christ, not by works. You can't do no works by your hand that'll save you. You can't go out and witness and save yourself. There's nothing that you can do that will save you. It is only through obedience to the one that has already completed the work on the cross. It is the work of the cross that took everything that you had, all your drug abuse, all your abusive words, all your pride. Oh my God, I was blew up with pride. I walked the streets and said, if anybody disrespected me, I was fighting for disrespect, foolishness. Oh, uh, who cares what the world thinks about me? Only now I regard they come to see the light. I'm not caring about the world and what they think of me. I only will care about what Christ thinks about me and his approval of who and what I do for him. We do it all for him. So I encourage you that when you know that there's some things and ties that ties you to this world, disconnect from it. If it's the music, I like rap music, but it drove me away from God, so I turn it loose. I like to smoke marijuana, but it drove me away from God, so I turned it loose. Oh, some of you like to sip and drink until you're turned over to the side. But I promise you that God is better than the liquor, better than the marijuana, more pleasing than a car in a house. What are you worried about all this stuff, materials, clothes, and garbage that moths eat written? My God, this stuff has an end to it. But Christ, there is no end. That's why he continued to preach about his kingdom. The kingdom of God is everlasting. Kingdom, the king's domain. I, I feel my helper coming. King means authority. Domain is his territory. God's authority over his territory. Help me, Holy Ghost. It is the power by which we preach this gospel. And we're not ashamed to preach it under the bridge, in the streets, all over the world. We remember in the Old Testament that the kingdom of God was just limited and only released into the Jewish kingdom. He began to show us through the kingdom of Israel. But here comes Jesus with a New Testament, unveiling God's fullness in his plan. The kingdom of heaven, not just Jews, but the world. It is black, white. It is Philippine. It's Chinese. Oh my God, it's Islam. It's, it's not, not the nation of Islam, but it is the Eastern culture. It is all nations of people coming into the faith because you can only get it by faith. You can't get it just by word. You've got to believe who he is before you come to 
to him. You got to believe that he's a healer before you get healed. And when he heals you, you'll cry out, Jehovah Rapha. It's the God that healeth me. You got to have faith when an economy is going bad that God would be just. Jai was the ones that provides for me. I'm not worried about the, the, the money and the digital and all of that mess. The kingdom has its own economy. Uh, that's why you never seen the righteous begging for bread. My God, have faith in his word because he cannot lie. And when he says, I'll be with you and never forsake you, you, you got to believe it. And that's why when tests and trials come, you won't lay back and go back into the old one of who you are. That's how faith is tested. That's how faith is. It, it, it is not proven until it's tested. People say they're your friend. Well, yeah. It's easy to be a friend when everything is fine and dandy. It's easy to be their friend when they're doing what you would like them to do. But let some pressure come. Uh, it's easy to go uh, to the altar and say, I do. And we forget the vows that we make in sickness and in health, in rich and in poor. We make these vows only looking at the good the rich, the health, but we don't consider. We don't consider. I hope y'all being honest with me. I hope you being honest with God because if you didn't look at the sickening part, when sickness comes and you true to it, you hold in with God. If your health is, is, a, is, is compromised, when the tests come because the value made with God, you'll stay in the battle. You'll hold the line. You won't walk away from the vow that you made with God. The Bible says when you make a vow to God, make sure that you keep it. And that is how we walk in God. We cannot pick the parts of scripture we want to buy to. No, no. The Bible says eat the whole row. Don't just eat the Old Testament. Eat all of it. Don't, don't eat the part that you like, but eat all of it. And that is how you come into obedience with God. The reason why we can't be successful in our lives is because we have picked and chosen the part of God and the word that we want to obey to. The devil is a lie. Even when it don't fit and make you feel good, you got to eat it. The prophet said when he tasted it, it went down bitter. That's the part. That's you. That's your flesh that that word is going down and convicting everything in your heart. If you in trouble in your life and ain't no conviction there, if you out of place in your marriage and ain't no conviction there, if you are doing something ungodly and ain't no conviction there, then this has fell on thorns in your heart because it is the one that receives the word of God on good ground that says, yeah, I'm wrong. Let me get it right. I can't go like this. The question today, people of God, is this. If he cracked the sky, are you in obedience to his word? Are you fully receiving in the obedience? The good ground here, let me help me, God. The one that is on good ground is the one that hears the word receives it by faith and it produces 
fruit. Uh, you got to have fruit. Even in a pandemic, uh, it shouldn't stop you from producing fruit. It shouldn't say, if what is your call? Uh, but the Bible says, Paul says, do the work. Do the work. Do the work of an evangelist. So you cry persecution because we can't go in the building because of pandemic. The devil is a lie. God said in the word, even with the temptation, he provides a way. Here is a way to move the word of God across cross nations, greater works. <laughs> Do you know the gospel is being played in states and everything? Here we are in Wyandotte, Michigan, and we're on social media. That means they can hit us in China. That means they can hit us overseas in Iran. They can join the church. All they got to do is hit Facebook and the word is going out all over the world. What's stopping your ministry? What's stopping you from bearing fruit? The love of the fruit, my God. The fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such thing there is no law. I want to ask y'all who is crying and suing people about not going in the church. I ain't coming against you, but I want to just challenge you. What's stopping you from spreading the gospel to those that are in need? My heart cries for souls. When I lay down and look at the death toll on TV, my heart cries for souls. My daddy was a soul winner. Taught me how to go after the soul with a passion and a compassion. He said, son, if you're going to do this, you got to be after the soul. If you ain't for the soul, then that ain't where God's heart is. And it's one thing that I asked of God. Before that man leave this earth, give me a double portion of what he had. Give me a double portion of the wisdom that he had. Give me a double portion of the compassion that he had for souls. And God granted it. And when he granted it and the man of God left out of here, I asked the people, the nurses, to get me a water, some water in a bowl. And I begin to watch, watch the prophet's feet. Oh, forgive me, God, in this place. I washed his feet. I served him until he went up. Uh, even Elijah told Elisha, if you see me go up, then you got your requests. And today I'm remembering when I see my daddy depart. I didn't see him in the natural. Give me my voice, Holy Spirit. I seen him in the spirit. I seen the spirit being yielded and go up to God. That's when I knew that the devil portion was added unto me. And I pray that now that's the reason why I can't sleep. That's the reason why I'm up praying all night. That's the reason why I'm walking the floor. My father, I called him the night walker because that man would walk and pray. And overseer, I tell you, praying in his sleep. You walk in there and see who is this man praying to? Who is he talking to? My God, he was under the Holy Ghost. He was a man of prayer and righteousness. He was a man of compassion. And I ask God, give me that and more. So here we are today. And I'm asking you and challenging every one of you. Don't you get down about no pandemic. We have always moved. This gospel has moved without a church. The gospel, remember in the Old Testament, we were in tents. What's wrong with a tent? Ain't nothing wrong 
wrong with no tent. What's wrong? My father, he used to get out on the corner with a bullhorn. You a preacher? Find you a bullhorn in a corner and begin to lift up the name of the Lord. It's not about what you do, but it's about the power that's in you. The Holy Spirit gives us dunamis power. That kind of power you can preach in a dry place. My God help me today. I feel my helper. You can preach in a dry place and the seed of fall. That it ain't my concern where it fall at. Just release the seed, the word, wherever it go. Let God deal with the hearts of the people in which it is received and accepted. We pray, my God, in this time, people of God, you must have compassion for the souls. Over 200,000 people has left this earth. And if that don't move the Christian, if that don't move the preacher, if that don't charge the evangelist, if that does not prick the heart of the prophets and the ministers, are we still sitting dormant? Are we still muted? Are we carrying on about the cares of our life? I understand. I was witnessing to a young man yesterday, and he told me I'm worried about the money. I'm worried about a job. And I said, man, listen here. When you put your faith in God, you don't have to worry about any of that. Jesus said, he, he said, I, 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 he, he take care of the lilies. He takes care of the lilies. How much more will he take care of you? I know. That is hard. Listen, Facebook friends and family, I know it's hard. I know it seems like you cannot find a way, but God is calling you today to trust him. Not in the pen, not in the White House. You can't believe nothing that come out of them people's mouth. He's asking you to trust in him. He cannot lie. He cannot fail. And that is why even our own bishop can stand in the midst of being challenged physically and still deliver God's word. My God, that's how we can stand because the just, the just, those are justified. We live by faith. You can always see how you're going to make it. Quit working 12 and 13 jobs till you kill yourself. You're looking at the stuff of this world. You want to know how to make You want to know how to make it? Find the church and pay tithes. Give unto the Lord and watch him give back to you. It's a principle that will not lie. My overseer always taught us, she said, a principle. It works even though if you don't believe it. And I found it true. I've seen drug dealers pay tithe and still be blessed. Oh, yeah, oh, I'm talking truth now. There's some churches that have been built by drug dealers. I'm telling you. God will turn over the wealth of the wicked to bless the righteous. And here we are worried and working until we, we don't have no rest. We don't have no time to ministry. No, no, that ain't God. What God is saying is the just by faith, I'll take care of you. You got to believe it. You've got to believe it. And you know what the end of the conversation was with this young man? He said, well, you know what? I might as well try. I ain't got nothing else to go for. And my hands went up. Without him even going up in my heart, my hands went up. Because I don't care where you are. If you have run out of everything that you could do with your hands, 50, 11 jobs, as Bishop say. You can work 50, 11 jobs and still not meet 
the requirements that you do. And you know what my mother said? It'll be like a pocket with a hole in it. And the more you put money in it, the more it go out. You can't even tell where it's going because you're doing it for the wrong reason. Ain't no faith in it. I ain't telling you not to work. But what I'm telling you is about the wisdom of God, the spirit of wisdom. It gives you rest. It tells you how to go about it. It tells you when to stop. It tells you this is too much. And we working ourselves and killing ourselves. Listen, today, God is calling you away from the trust of this world. Quit trusting in the government and trust in God because the king is tied to his kingdom and we are the citizens of his kingdom. And if it's something with you that need God, and I will tell you today, all of you need God, come on in. All you have to do is say, Lord, I'm wrong and you are right. I repent of every, every one of my sins. And I believe that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, to this earth, died for me, and you rose him again, that I may have life. You took all of my stuff, all of my mess to the grave, and you buried it in a, sin of, in a sea of forgiveness, and you rose with power and authority. Death has no sting. Don't you? Some of y'all worried about death. Don't you want to have to worry? When you have life, there's no need to worry about death. He is the light and the light of men. He is life. And so today, if you repent of your sins and believe in Jesus Christ, no matter where you are, no matter what circumstances you're going through, God will save you. It's in my heart and the compassion of Zion Worship Center. Souls. That's what we're going after, souls. I don't want any glory. I don't want any fame. I want to win souls for the kingdom. That's, that, that's it. Souls for the kingdom. That's our purpose. That is it. And so if you, if you, you need prayer, repentance, please get a, follow us. And, and, and then on Facebook, I know they're already putting it on there. Uh, just list, uh, follow those commands. Hit us up. Leave something in the box. But today, whosoever will, let them come. That is the message of the kingdom. There's a greater life for you, a greater promise for you. And we thank God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.